Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 30 Question Thursday. Um, if anybody has troubles hearing me or if the wind's blowing in the microphone, please do let me know. And we are here today at beautiful Colorado in the mountains. Um, it Indian Hot Springs. Cool little place. Never been here before, but... Uh, Got the bike out and came to Colorado and going to do this because uh, tomorrow we have a gig up in Boulder for doing some work with one of our original Ascension chambers. We're going to do some some work there on the chamber, upgrade it, and do some workshops tomorrow. So anyway, um, taking the day to play with you guys and go play in the springs and on the bike. So happy to be here this morning. Good to see all of you guys. Um fantastic group of people as always here with us this morning um just scrolling through everybody and um everybody who is live right now uh gosh we we implore you guys to all join us live sometime because there's some great chats that go on here on the chat and um again uh for you those of you that are live if you could put your questions over in the questions tab uh that way i can catch up with you there so, let's set space this morning. Got my quantum grid point. Got my chalice ring over the camera and speakers. Some hot tea. All right. So, going into the heart space, imagining within your physical heart, your light. Expanding your light to the heart of the earth, connecting your light with the light of Gaia. Connecting your light to the heart of creation. Breathing in that light of all that is. And as you move right into the heart space, we're all connected here within this space and all those who will watch. And here we go. Let's see. So I'm not sure if we have any questions. Um, I do know, do remember one question somebody um, sent through on the email. I guess usually we go through the email questions first. Um, and let me just double check here. I'm not seeing any questions that were forwarded to me, but uh, the one that I do remember was somebody was asking about um, using the, the tensor rings to, or any of the tensor tools, to do distance work with other people. And um, there, there's a lot of ways that you can do that, but basically, you know, if you have a ring, you can do it by just imagining the person standing within this column. Um, you can imagine yourself standing in this column and inviting them into there. Um, when you are in the heart space and you are using your imagination and your intentions, that's where we connect to the quantum fields, uh, to that, that higher aspect of the tools. So as long as you're in your heart space, you have the intentions, however you do it, that is easy, is going to work. Now, I know a lot of people who, um, you know, in, in the gentleman, Brian, who asked the question by email, um, also was asking about if it's kind of likened to a radionic machine. So radionics, they'll use what's called a witness. Um, most people use a sample of DNA, like a nail clipping hair, things like that, or if you're working with plants, um, soil, whatever it is, just a, an actual physical representation of it for the quantum entanglement aspect. But truly, um, for the quantum entanglement of that to happen, you can actually use a photograph of a person. If you don't, you know, if you're not into the imagination as much, and you want something more tangible here with your eyes, use a photograph. Um, you know, you can take a refrigerator magnet, put a person's photograph on there, hang the ring right over that magnet, and that way every time that you look at that photograph with this ring around it, you are sending that energy to that person. That simple. We're actually, um, oh gosh, I've been trying to design here for a few years of actually, and I'm going to do it here, hopefully this summer, is a picture frame 
that it's it's magnetic so that you just slip a picture inside of it and it clip it together and it has all the rings behind it so it is kind of like a what we were just speaking here it's it's a transfer of that energy to that person place or thing so anyway we'll shoot over here to the questions tab uh, Leon can you explain how Gaia's Gaia's spheres bubble of energy is not collapsed by the harmonic creation field on the pyramids oh so Leon are you asking about on top of the ascension pyramids there is the the Gaia sphere and then right below that there are three sets of rings um, so my understanding, Leon, is what you're talking about is where Slim Sperling used to talk about how you have a harmonizer, uh, one of his creations that he'd create, and he would put a ring over that so that it would contain the field and clear it, which I never understood why your harmonizer would ever need cleared. But when Slim put the ring over the harmonizer to contain that field, it was only his intention of putting the ring over that to contain that field. You can have the intention of putting that ring over that whatever energy tool that radiates out, whether it is the Gaia sphere on top of the, um, the pyramid, or whether it's a tensor field generator, an activator, a pyramid, whatever it is that broadcasts out, you can put the ring over it with the intention of amplifying, of expanding that field. It is only through the intention of containing that field will that be contained. So in the, in the question with the, um, the Gaia sphere on top of the Ascension Pyramids, and we have all those stacks of rings, the stacks of rings, the columns of light are not working as a containment field. They are working as an amplification um, and a harmonizing of all the energies. And of course... I, I do believe that it also does help to um, funnel, channel that energy of the Gaia sphere more into the pyramid because truly within that pyramid, the ascension pyramids, inside of there is where it is the most potent. And, and so, yes, I believe that those rings are also helping to channel in that energy and contain that as well. But, you know, the rings aren't helping contain it. It's the structure of the pyramid that can contains that energy um, let's see uh, jumbo the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring is hanging in my room can its energy penetrate and go through walls and other solid obstacles yes so the the tensor fields um, these fields are a quantum field so they can't be stopped by Faraday cages lead I mean the the column of light that comes out of these rings we are working with geopathic, geomagnetic, um, underground fissures, streams, things like that. So, I mean, this goes through solid earth. It goes through walls. It goes through everything. As it is a quantum field, it is unstoppable uh, in with physical means. Um, Christine, I followed your video and made the harmonizer collar ring, which is great, by the way. And so, yeah, we put out, uh, as I told you guys for a while, I was going to make a, the video to make the collar ring with the harmonizer ring, um, which we did here recently. Would I be correct in thinking that if I had the collar ring and a chalice ring as a bangle, it would be the same as wearing the bi pendant? So, you know, yes, Christine. So basically the, the binary infusion pendant, this one here that has the harmonizer ring and the chalice ring with it. The binary infusion pendant is basically utilizing both those frequencies together to create that divine I am activator field like what is on our divine I am activator pendants and also on the Taurus, the divine I am Taurus. So to me, uh, Christine, to truly answer that question, if you have that collar ring on and you're wearing a bangle and they're the harmonizer and the chalice, all you need is that intention 
that they are coming together, that they're working just like that binary infusion pendant. Um, even though they're both going to be working throughout your field, um, you know, and so the quick answer would be yes. It will work exactly like the binary infusion pendant. To me, it would work more powerfully because of your intentions and attention onto it of bringing your intentions and your attention to that bangle with the collar ring. And to me, that would just make it more potent for you. Um, but the short answer is yes. Having either one of those on your body will be just like having that binary infusion pendant. Uh, let's see, Renard, hey, can you speak to using any of the rings with candle magic? Would you feel using the elementals are better for that type of work? Um, so I am not ooh, too familiar with candle magic, but um, you know, it's uh, yes, totally the tensor fields are going to help to harmonize that work. They're going to bring in other levels and layers to it. They're going to ensure that all that comes through is in the highest and best. Um, actually, somebody made us candle holders once that would fit a galactic ascension ring in it. And so that was kind of cool. So I might have to get that out, Renard, and, and play with that whole concept. Um, but, you know, yes, totally the tensor fields are going to help to amplify all that. And as far as the question is, if the elementals would assist, you know, if the elementals would be a part of that, working with the candle magic, um, you know, I would say yes there too. To me, that would be more working in kind of some more of the earth-based stuff. Um, the, the, the physical world is, is kind of in the environmental. That's kind of how I feel about it, but that's just kind of how... I connect with the elementals as being more in this earth-based physical world and and working within this physical construct of Gaia um, versus our other constructs that we create, which the tensor rings are great for because that other soul level base stuff. Um, Jamie, were you planning on creating a golden fire coil in silver? Um, you know, I, okay. So to answer that question, right now we have cell phone tabs on sale for the next couple days. We're selling them for like 26 bucks, you guys, right now. It's just kind of a, a gift offering um, to everybody to get these, you know, to manufacturing price. Um, we're gonna start doing that probably weekly. The point of that to answer the question is, is that we're going to do the golden fire coils next um, and have a sale on those. Once we get it figured out, um, I'm been working at updating the coils. So the long, the long story to your and to the answer to the question here is working on updating the golden fire coils. They're already updated, but there's still something that I want to sit with Brenda and work with, um, so that you can still receive that golden fire energy, but yet you can also be brought into that toroidal field of the chalice energy, which is my intention. So we're going to do that with the copper ones first. So once we get the copper golden fire coils totally energetically upgraded, updated, because I haven't been able to really um, recommend those to a lot of people lately, well, geez, for the past year or so, um, you know, there's still some people that, you know, it, it, that's the one that feels right for them, but it, it's not like it used to be. So I really want to update that coil. Once we update the copper golden fire coil, then yes, we're totally going to start making silver coils. Um, and they'll be, they'll have the golden fire, the, all the properties of the golden fire. So don't worry if you still want everything that the golden fire has, that the harmony coil before it had. Um, which that harmony coil was phenomenal and that went into the golden fire. The golden fire was phenomenal and now Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, all right. Sorry, we're using using a uh, mobile hotspot here. So back again. All right. So as I was saying, that um, the the Golden Fire coil was really phenomenal. But now then, that we're going to add in this chalice and the harmonizer, that divine I am, it's just going to be that much more phenomenal and so the silver one will be a great one to do I actually already have all the wire for it. i've been looking at it here for the past couple weeks and so we'll definitely make silver coils jr after using the nine inch harmonizer ring for six hours to restructure water food etc how long does the new structure last so anytime that you do the work with a tensor ring and your water food etc and it does the energetic as well as the physical within that four to six hours, it can stay like that indefinitely until an outside force acts upon it. Until you sit it, you know, on top of your electrical box or in front of your Wi-Fi or, you know, you, you, you talk badly to it, whatever it is, um, the, that spin rate, the, the energetics of it will last indefinitely until that outside force is acted upon it. So, you know, that's why a lot of us will figure out how to keep the rings with our, uh, with our water, food, etc. you know, all the time. Now, kind of like when we're using the rings with, um, you know, if you're going to, to do a bottle of supplements, and you put the supplements in the ring, it's going to clear that entire bottle and that will all be good again, you know, until something outside acts on it. But if you just have it sitting in your home, you know, it's going to keep for hours. It's going to take some time for um, anything outside onto it to shift it, just like it took some time for the tensor field to shift it. Anna, the wings of talk combined with the everything ring was the first tools I felt the energy, pulsating hot energy in my hands. Any idea what these do combined? No, I really don't. Um, a lot of it depends on what it is that you need and what your unconscious or conscious intentions are with it. Because that everything ring, um, you know, it responds so well to conscious input because that everything ring is so, it's a field that is just, it's such a limitless field. Um, and that's why, you know, we call it the chaos ring too, is because it's so limitless. There's so much in there. Um, so, you know, whatever. So if you fine tune your intent when you're in the heart space, your intent when you use that everything ring with the wings of talk, um, it's going to respond. You know, for sure it's going to amplify things. Um, sorry, I can't give you a better answer there on that one, Anna. Um, Jennifer, is the activator 3.1 meant for protection during sleep? I've been using it with intention to remove negative energies from the body before with it placed on crown chakra. Um, so, yes, the activator 3.1, you know, that's one that most of us have kept in our sleeping areas. Um, it does have that, that entire field. There's, there's a smaller field that's really super strong on that, um, activator 3.1 that on that activator. And so that field, you know, it's about, oh gosh, hundred yards across approximately just innately, um, 200 feet to 300 feet across. And then, you know, that golden fire generator in there, that creates that field that's about two and a half miles across. So there's kind of like two concentric bubbles there. Within that first bubble there, um, you know, size of the home, larger than a home, that is going to do, you know, that work of clearing, especially while we're asleep. Um, let's see, let me go back to your question here. And yes, using it with intention to remove negative energies from the body. Um, and I'm not sure what you have here with that karasystem.com. Um, 
but removing negative energies from the body. Yes, that is perfect because if you go to sleep with that intention, and especially if you place it up on the crown, um, you know, when you're asleep, great things happen when we're sleeping and with intention with the tools. Um, Christine, I wanted to get the practitioner rings, but you said you had the divine I am set coming. Can you discuss the difference between the harmonic creation fill trio set and the new set and which would be better? You know, really I cannot because though I, I have the very first set of the practitioner rings as a prototype because it's a lighter gauge, we're still experimenting with the right cubit measures to use. Um, it's going to be a little while before we get that divine I am um, practitioner set really out there and going. Um, and so I really don't know too much about the comparisons of the trio and that set. Um, I do know that all of the trios now are actually carrying a lot more of that chalice and that divine I am energy because the golden fire is, um, it's holding a lot of that harmonizer energy and, um, and that regeneration ring is holding a lot more of that chalice energy. So the golden fire and the regeneration rings together to me are coming very close to what is in the chalice and the harmonizer, that divine I am, the, um, you know, the binary infusion, that combination. And so the, if I, I'd hate to say to wait, if you really want to get the practitioner's rings, I'd hate to say to wait for us to get the, um, binary infusion set going because it might be, a couple months here it's just really hard to say um but the golden fire ring and the and the um regeneration ring are doing phenomenal things together now i mean they always have but to me those two together it it's it's beyond the harmonic creation field trio but yet it still contains that energetics of the harmonic creation field trio and that's the thing is this binary infusion um you know the divine i am all of this is basically it does contain that energetic of the trio but it's it's beyond it um gosh sorry i'm giving you guys such vague answers here today must be the water distracting me um, you know, so really, Christine, I, I'd almost say, uh, I have no advice. You'll have to sit with that one and see, because like I say, I really cannot say when we're going to get that set created. And that set of six gauge that I've been playing with, they're not as, that new set is just not as tangible, um, from just a little bit that I was playing with it yesterday. Um, I don't feel it as much on the physical. I haven't been able to sit with it yet, but it's definitely not as physically perceivable and potent as using a golden fire and a regeneration ring. Um, but, and that's the thing is that we still are going to have to do some energetic tweaking as well as the physical on those before, you know, we can release those. Um, Jumbo, I noticed that when I started wearing the binary infusion pendant, I started to get frequent headaches and other aches in the body. Could this be the result of the pendant's energy working on my physical structure? Whew. Yes. So if uh, the past week or two weeks, people have been experiencing a lot of things in the physical. What is going on there that uh, and the, it, it goes in along the lines of everything that's been happening to everybody across the board is, is that as our light is coming in and we are bringing in more of who we are throughout this universe. I mean, that has been the big work here recently. That's been that we've been doing that. My sister's been doing for clients that I've been helping people with that other people have been talking about a lot lately is the bringing in of all of our soul aspects through all lifetimes, not just this planet. We are going deep back into creation all the way back and, and, and bringing all of that in right now. And so the, the aches, the pains, the, the all the stuff, um, the headache, 
need to harmonize. And, and maybe that's what we'll do today is do some harmonization work here at the end. Um, the headaches, the aches, the pains, all of that to me is the bringing in of all of those aspects and everything just needs harmonized. Um, I tell you what, you guys, we are stepping into some pretty, it, this has never been done in this universe. Probably not ever been done in anywhere in creation in any other universe, what we're doing right now. Bringing in all of our, all of our soul's creation right now. So Jumbo, yeah, the, the aches, the pains, the, the frequent headaches, that personally t for you, that does feel like that too is just the harmonization work does clearing work. It, it also harmonizes the things that are coming in. Um, so uh, while we're on the subject, well, no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell the story and we'll do some harmonization work here at the end. Uh, Linda, which tensor ring will help with the energies of solar flares? Good question. You know, allowing... Being grounded, connecting with Gaia, doing the Trinity breath, being an open vessel for it to flow through you. Um, you know, those solar flares are here for a reason, and we are all grounding rods. So the more that you can be open and allowing and that hollow bone and not rigid, not in fear of it, um, and just allowing it to flow through you, your entire being, the earth, to me, I think that would be the best thing versus a tensor ring. Granted, standing inside of a practitioner's rings or, you know, just having any of the tools around you, to me, will help. But, um, yeah, I think just having that intent of allowing things to flow through with grace, quickness, and ease. Uh, Leon, can you tell us about the giant pyramid complex you're currently creating? Yeah, so you guys probably, some of you guys probably seen that the post on social media. Um, we were just doing a photo, a photo session with our with our um, Ascension Pyramid booth pyramid, which is a ten by ten base. It's about thirteen feet tall, and it's the one that um, I take all over when I do um, expos and shows. And it's it's our booth, uh, that giant pyramid. And that is going to be a scale replication of, uh, it's going to be, we're replicating that one to scale in a 36 foot tall pyramid. So right now we have a 26 inch torus in there. We're making, what is it, like a 54 inch torus, something of that nature. It's huge. Um, and then we're making a giant Gaia sphere um, to go on top of here. We're making it for the mass meditation initiative which there was a few years ago, I think it was 2018, they did the Million Person Meditation in Washington, D.C., uh, Disclosure Fest. And then in 2019, we were supposed to do the, we were supposed to build this pyramid in 2019, actually, for the Million Person Meditation in downtown L.A., which, of course, got canceled. So out in the Los Angeles area, they're doing it again here for this summer solstice. And um, there's, there's all these stages. It's, it's a huge event, but, um, it's a one day outdoor event and we're building that 36 foot tall pyramid. It's going to have about a 24 by 24 foot base. And it is going to be where the, the meditation is going to take place. It's going to be filled with people in it, around it on the stage. It's going to be, it's going to be part of the stage. Um, and so that giant pyramid is going to be, you know, it's going to broadcast. Um, it's going to harmonize. It's going to bring a higher connection to everybody. It's going to bring through that higher connection of everybody. It's going to be a pretty powerful event. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be live streamed too. Um, so, and yeah, we're in the process of building that. My shop foreman, my nephew, Lucas, he's, He's busy probably today still too of um, working on the top capstone of that because that has to be something that can hold the weight. So we've been engineering, designing this thing to be able to hold the weight. The top part is going to be a solid steel construction. Um, and then we're going to have all the larger copper pipes 
and they're all going to have uh, giant wooden dowels in them to keep the structure solid and yeah it's going to be exciting so we'll show some more information along the way with that hey valerie would that include the binary pendant being blurry when you look at it <laughs> right so yeah the binary infusion pendant um I had a lot of these tools they, they they do become blurry when you look at them there they are i tell you they they are powerful they're doing some shifts uh jennifer do you have a product that will help spirits do not attach to a person or enter a home um Yes, so the ghosts, the waywards, um, they've been coming up a lot recently. And my sister and I were looking at that too because, I mean, she's been seeing an abnormal number of them. And we've been seeing a lot of really wild stuff going on out in the multiverse. And just the other day, we did some huge work with, um, you know, connecting in. Because to me, my, so my, um, thought on that when Brenda and I were doing the work with that with all the different waywards that are coming through is is that as we're bringing in all these different soul aspects that all these soul aspects are coming in they've been causing problems and they have attachments or else they haven't been crossed over um, there's something with that not certainly sure but we feel that's a connection there with these waywards um, you know having it can be as simple as having the quantum grid point in your home the golden fire generator in your home. Um, you know, most all of the tools have the golden fire in them. And it is the golden fire that is going to um, keep them from sticking to you. And, you know, most always when they come into the ghost way where it comes into the field of the golden fire, whether it's a generator, the pyramid, whatever, that their soul comes in to do that sacred heart activation with them and it takes them home. Um, you know, so those, any of those tools that have the golden fire would be very helpful. I'm wearing my wand for one of the first times in a very long time. And Jennifer, this is one that, um, the, the golden, the golden fire and light wand is one that, you know, we teach people how to make the columns of light with, we, we teach people how you can activate your own sacred heart and then the sacred heart of others and the sacred heart of a ghost wayward. Um, so it's a simple tool that even kids can use to cross over ghosts as well. Um, so the, um, the wings of talk was another one that is a very powerful one for crossing over ghost waywards. The key pendant was our original, but the wand is a really versatile one. Um, you know, that, might be one to work with too. Anna, can you use can you elaborate about the use of the quantum grid points? Also, if the ascension pyramids create a line of energy between them, I am thinking ley lines kind of thing. Yes. So whether it is the quantum grid point or any of the ascension pyramids, they all are connecting to every one of the sixty degree angle pyramids that we've created at Twisted Say Studios. We call it the ascension grid. And so there is a line that connects them all. So the one of the original purposes of creating the quantum grid points was so that you could create a line that goes between these two pyramids. So if you have just a single quantum grid point, you sit it in your space, you have the intention of what you want the flavor of that space to be. It's still gonna be bringing through um, everything that radiates outside of the ascension pyramids it's going to be bringing through that golden fire. It's going to be bringing through, uh, you know, for the clearing work. So it's going to work with EMFs, all the fun stuff, dense consciousness. But for people who have like a cell phone tower and they want to take out a whole line of cell phone towers, not take them out. They want to connect one pyramid on one side of the cell phone tower line and they use two pyramids. And that line that goes between them, if that, whatever that line intersects, it is going to be doing, bringing through that same energy, doing that same work. So when we originally made these, <laughs> it was actually for our friend Adrian for the Disclosure Fest, because before we were going to do the do that event in LA in 2019, 
he wanted to grid the entire city and also work with all the communication towers, all of that. So that was actually why we originally created these quantum grid points. And so, yeah, that's what he did. He did all of LA County and beyond where he would place a grid point on either side of the lines of the towers and have the intentions of, you know, shifting the, the energetic output of those towers. So that was one of the original uses of, of the quantum grid points. Uh, Jumbo, are you planning to create some harmonizer bracelets? No, but we will have the chalice slash divine I am thicker bracelets out this week. Um, we haven't we have them all made, but we haven't sat down with them to make sure energetically or to see energetically what it is that they're doing after they were created. Um, they for sure have the chalice energy in them. But I believe they're also going to carry that harmonizer energy, which is that divine I am energy. So it's my intention um, that we're going to be able to anchor both of those energies into one. We'll see how that goes. Um, we may have to end up making harmonizer bracelets too. I don't know. But we will have the thicker gauge solid silver, the 0.99 silver in the HECA clasp of the chalice or divine I am harmonizer don't know what it is yet <laughs> but it'll be this week uh, Christine my teenage son surprisingly both wanted to wear Wi-Fi rings on a lanyard oh both your sons want to wear Wi-Fi rings would they need a cell phone tab on their phones as well if they don't keep the phone on their person does wearing it help them when they do talk on it is the two inch harmonizer I have a better alternative for them to wear um, going to your last question first, the two inch harmonizer ring is a lot more than the Wi-Fi ring. The Wi-Fi ring is straight golden fire. The harmonizer ring, the two inch harmonizer ring, which I have on here in my pocket because um, I always meet lucky people who receive a harmonizer ring and I like to carry it. This two inch harmonizer ring is a lot more than that golden fire ring but whatever they're attracted to because some people may not be attracted to the harmonizer ring because harmonizer ring is going to shift them out of a lot of their duality constructs their perceptions of of everything um but yeah the harmonizer ring is definitely a step beyond that um the wi-fi ring for the golden fire now, as far as having a cell phone tab on your phone, if, you, if you're wearing your tools and you don't have your cell phone on you, yes, your field is, is bolstered, your field is transforming any of the stuff that comes in. Now, when you have your phone right here with you, it's up to your ear, then it doesn't have as much of a chance of working on your phone as your phone having the Wi-Fi ring on it. It's kind of like, um, you know, sitting in front of an electrical box. Um, see if there's one out here. There's a Wi-Fi, but oh, and I get terrible Wi-Fi, but there's a Wi-Fi transmitter. Um, the, uh, if you sit like in front of a, a fuse panel electrical box that has a five and a half to six foot uh, field out from it, you know, we always recommend if you spend a lot of time there to put a ring, um, a, a golden fire disc or taping on a harmonizer ring or a Wi-Fi ring, whatever, onto that box because, um, you know, that field is, is so strong that you're right there within the field. Um, so as long as your son's if they're not keeping it on their person all the time, then yeah, they're, they're good. If they're just using their phones occasionally and, and not like my 10 year old daughter who plays on her phone anymore, my 10 year old daughter becoming a teenager. Oh my goodness. Bernard, how does the binary pendant work with light and sound? Phenomenally with light and sound. So the binary infusion pendant, um, just the harmonizer ring, to me is doing phenomenal things with sound um, whether it is through putting it onto your um, electrical equipment to work digitally through it or i prefer to use it with your you know whatever your speaker 
Uh, so whatever is creating the actual physical sound wave is where I would suggest putting those rings, especially the harmonizer ring. Now the chalice ring, I'm not sure. I know I love the chalice ring for water. That's my favorite right now um, with water. But as far as uh, light and sound, the chalice, that energetic, so it'll still carry through. So the sound waves will use that, that energetics of the chalice, well, the binary infusion. The sound waves will be like a carrier wave that will bring through a lot of the aspects of this energy of the binary infusion pendant on those sound waves. Um, so, and as far as light goes too, yeah, using this with your LEDs, with your light bulbs, and that's something too, um, we have a friend, actually, God, I need to look him up down here in Colorado. I, he received the, all the prototypes to the, um, to the harmonizer, two inch harmonizer ring. He got all those prototype rings because he has light beds and he's using LED light through crystal. And so the harmonizer ring is what came up as the best for using with those LED light beds. Um, but I would say, yeah, totally that binary infusion would be the way to go with, with light. JR, can I take apart the silver binary infusion pendant and put either the harmonizer or the chalice in water to charge it? Um, yes. So the, okay. Yes and no. I can't actually say yes, put sterling silver in your water because it contains minute particles of copper. And we don't recommend putting copper directly in water unless you muscle test to see that you're not receiving too much copper. So you can use the binary infusion pendants silver in water with the, um, okay. So sterling silver in water will patina. You'll see a little bit of green coming through and then when we also, when we do the, the brazing for the sterling silver, we use a sterling silver brazing rod that has just a little bit more copper in it. It's still mostly silver, but it has a little bit more copper than the sterling silver does. So it is going to turn green. And so you'll notice that if you put your sterling silver into water, you may notice it starting to turn green. That's that patina. That is it sloughing off the, the copper. Um, now, if you muscle test and make sure that that is okay for you, that you're not receiving too much copper orally, you know, because the Vedas, they did it for thousands of years, but we don't recommend it unless you're muscle testing to make sure that you do not receive too much copper orally. But yes, I would, I, I would say that you could use it with your water. Check it once a week, you know, if not once a day, but check at least once a week just to make sure that, you know, that your body is still good with that because your body does need copper. Um, let's see. Over here in the chat. Yeah, Leon's talking about sticking the gateway tab on your water bottle base. I know I was going to use, tell you about that because Leon takes that uh, gateway tab, the three rings that we use for a cell phone tab and a computer tab and sticks that to the bottom of the, the water bottle. Um, let's see. So yeah, like I say, everybody is doing some really phenomenal things here in chat. Um, Thank you, Leon, for, for sharing for sharing stuff here with everybody and everybody else for, for sharing here um, over in the, the chat. Um, Angela asked, how much does the Golden Fire Disc cost? The Golden Fire Discs are 42 bucks, but you can do the exact same thing that a disc does with a Wi-Fi ring, which is 18 bucks. It's just that the disc is, is, has a waterproof sticky and it's been flattened and it's it's more presentable and usable and easy um, versus a Wi-Fi ring that you have to tape. So totally the disc and the uh, Wi-Fi ring are exactly the same. And again, a step up would be the two inch harmonizer ring. Um, 
Yep, and Leon was mentioning how when Slim, and even when we began, we used to use um, a larger ring around the um, around our electrical um, meters. But once we started working with the consciousness of electricity, the consciousness of Gaia and the Earth Elementals, we put all that into the golden fire so it, it all goes through the whole electrical line. So you don't need a large ring around your panels or anything like that anymore. Just these small rings are going to be working throughout your entire electrical system. All right, you guys. So I'm going to um, jump off of the question side here and the chat side. And we're going to... I uh, see no questions have popped up here in a minute. So um, we're going to end the 30 question Thursday. And we're going to step into one last thing here about harmonizing. Um so my sister's friend julie had cataract surgery and they forgot to harmonize everything afterwards so for a couple days she had itchy eyes blurry eye all the stuff and finally they were like oh shoot we forgot to harmonize they harmonized it instantly the blurriness went away the itchiness went away everything was fine so harmonizing things um how you go about harmonizing something it's kind of like an attunement in that once you are attuned to that divine i am energetics let's see we did the divine i am activation last week didn't we so if you, if you missed that meditation, go back to our prior uh, 50 Question Friday that we just did. And at the last few minutes, last 10 minutes or whatever, we did that Divine I Am activation. And it's basically attuning you to, oh yeah, it's like my t-shirt. <laughs> my watch TV t-shirt from my favorite documentary, They Live. Oh, sorry. Um, the divine I am pendant is one that comes through and that that's just enough to knock us all out of the heart space, isn't it? Um, so when we do that work with the divine I am pendant or the binary infusion, we got to be in that heart space. And when you're in the heart space, you can imagine so for me, I when I do work with other people, I'll imagine these rings, how they present to me, or the pendant, how it presents to me is like this whitish, bluish bubble that spins. Um, I first presented as just like a ring that would spin around a person. To me anymore, it's like I see this spinning bubble and it comes around the person or whatever it is that you're working with. And um, so like, if you're going to work with your thyroid, something like that. You just imagine either that spinning ring coming in or that spinning white blue bubble because you're connecting to that energy. Again, you'll have to go back and do that divine I am activation in order to be attuned to that energy, to know what that energy is, unless you can just pick it up from looking at the rings or the pendant or the photos on the website because the energy, the energetics does come through. So however you imagine it, when you're in the heart space of that field, that energy coming around something that will harmonize it. So even when we've been working here recently over this past week with all of these soul aspects that are coming from um throughout the universe that we have been incarnate as a human as we're bringing in all these soul aspects and harmonizing them because they've been causing a lot of issues physical emotional mental even um going into the heart space imagining that bubble or those rings coming out and just holding that space so like any of the newer paradigm energy work that we do we don't try to do, especially with this chalice energy, with a chalice energy, which is part of that divine I am, um, you can't do. 
you can hold space. So you don't want to try to have an intended outcome. You already have a, a soft intention when you put that bubble or that spinning ring around something. You already have that soft intention of, hey, there's something that is not right that I would like to shift. So you don't have to get into details about what that shift is or how it's going to look. Um, that'll collapse the field. So you simply just hold space. You have your attention while you're in the heart space of that field being around whatever it is that you're working on. And you just hold your attention there for a few seconds. You know, you don't need to go over 30 seconds with that. Even just instantly, it can occur. So you just hold your attention there with that field and then let it go. It is amazing how that shifts things on the physical, um, whether it's an ache or a pain or some situation you're in, like driving through crazy traffic in Denver, whatever it is, just hold that space and that shifts it. So that's one way to harmonize. Um, my sister did a thing a while back before the chalice even came in that was the harmonizing breath and so that might be one to go back and look at too it's on youtube um just a few youtube uploads back the harmonizing breath and um she did that one yeah it was raid when the chalice energy was first starting to pop in and so um that might be an easy exercise too but anyway harmonize everything it's phenomenal all right you guys i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna go down into one of these hot springs caves i guess they built these caves in 1903 here in the indian springs and um there's 108 to 112 degree water so i'm gonna go down there and get all nice and toasty then go for a bike ride through the canyon and then go back to work tomorrow so man thank you guys for all being here appreciate it again thank you guys for sharing and um harmonize realities you guys it's huge harmonizing realities all right see you next time later on